You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's something now on Twitter, the Gaming Drag. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Lust Shards, Tate's Path. So yeah, before we jump right into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel, get some awesome rewards like permanent access to our community Discord server and full access to upcoming Not Safe for Work videos. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm Chaney, we're up and let's go. <clears throat> Alrighty. May 19th, right here. Okay. <clears throat> Do you want to go? Absolutely. But where can I find him? He just teleported. Oh, I think you know where. I think I do. If his automatic spell took him somewhere with high emotional value, then I've been there before. No time to waste, then. I run like the wind, using my speed and enchantments. I arrive at the desired spot, exhausted. I find the train tracks and start walking slowly along their rim. It doesn't take long until I start hearing the rustling of leaves and the scraping of sand and dirt. I leave the path around the corner through some more bushes and find a coiled-up cat sitting on the ground near an old abandoned crashed wagon, drawing in sand with a stick seemingly expressionless. <clears throat> I know he heard me since I'm not trying to be sneaky, and Mother Nature is not known for its quiet environment when every branch and leaf is basically a mini-alarm. I take his lack of reaction as a sign that I can approach, so I do, standing, just a f standing now just three feet behind him, crouched down, looking at his sand drawing. Mighty dragon stands with its wings spread and two small people on its sides with their arms raised. Something tells me he was expecting me. I decide to keep my mouth shut for a bit and focus on listening. But the silence only lasts for a little while anyway, broken by the sad voice of a cat, the saddest I've ever heard him since I met him. I'm sorry I lashed out at you. I don't blame you. I know he's a wyvern. I always did. I just... Didn't want to admit it, and since I know the chances are slim to domesticate one, you'd have better chances of keeping an alligator as a pet. You're new and don't know me very well, obviously. If barely. I'm not sure why I so expected for us to become a bonded pair just like that. I suppose it all went a bit over my head. Maybe I thought I could get a genuine awesome friend. You're one of the cool guys, new, powerful, popular, kind of naive, no offense, so I thought you'd be perfect to befriend. The picture he's been drawing now has multiple people around it. I can recognize Dallin's big muscles and sleeveless jacket, Aiden's snarky arm-crossing pose, Marin's elegant dress, and two more that I don't recognize, but judging by their ears, they could definitely be members of the EFD club if they applied. I sit down closer to him. Although he's trying to stay focused on the ground, I can see he's waiting for my response with a, with a held breath. May I know what's so wrong about your name? It's stupid. They named me that because of my happy-go-lucky personality. It literally means cheerful. I just don't want to believe I'm that shallow. Forgive me for the question. But is that not accurate? To be honest, I suppose. I'm happy because I try my hardest to be. <clears throat> Second deal. I just hate when people pity me or try to tiptoe around me just because I don't have parents. So I try to show everyone I'm okay. Which is true. I am okay. And it's not a lie, I just wanted a friend that knows that. But even they don't see it. He points at the drawing of the two long-eared figures, which I now assume must be his adoptive parents. Plus it, plus, it just doesn't sound that great in my humble opinion. Although they didn't want that name either at first. The people around kept calling me that since they haven't decided on a name. But in the end, they kept it. Too bad I couldn't remember my real name. Is it that bad to be named by the townspeople? He shrugs. Names have the most meaning when it's given by someone you love. Like your parents. And I was about seven years old when they finally decided on a name. At that point, it felt a bit redundant. Not very meaningful. And to put more salt to the wound, they invented a last name for me, too. Since I was never officially adopted. Can you take a guess at what it might be? Um, feline? That would be stupid, too. And kind of funny, but no. It's Foster. Tate Foster, the foster child. Wow. So unique, so stupid. Let's remind him every day of his two main distinct traits. You're right, it's stupid. Thank you! I legally challenged it when I turned 18, but Mr. Sebel was upset, calling it disrespectful, so I changed it back. Are they good to you? Your parents. Yeah, very. 
I do have some bottled up emotions for them. Still, I love them. Don't get me wrong. I know I talked to them. I know I talked them down a lot, but they were great people. Just not great at raising kids. At least not this kid. They gave me food, shelter, clothing, personal space, education, love, but there was always something missing. The problems were always overlooked, like my name. Most of the time, I can't even bring myself to call them by anything other than their names. I don't know what my name means either, but I like it, since it's the name my mother gave me, and I love her, so I respect it. <sighs> Must be nice. Is that why you kept trying to change your name yesterday and today? Something like that. I'd take a stupid name, too, if I feel like it's truly my own. The problem is that it needs to stick to people before I decide to change it. Don't want another Tartarus situation. His drawing is now done, but the dragon was erased in the process, replaced by a little wyvern. Same with the other people around, except for two. This way, the two figures next to the wyvern and the two felines became the main attraction. Can I hug you? Huh? He looks surprised, but quickly recovers. I'm usually the one who does that, without asking. So? Yeah. He does not resist, but doesn't make a big effort to return it either. He's shaking, and I feel like he'll fall over any moment. Second deal. Are you feeling alright? Fine, just... I just don't have much magic left. Actually, I'm almost completely paralyzed. Are you serious? I'm teleporting with my mind alone, my body kind of took a hit. It hurt to even move the stick to draw. But hey, at least now I know I can do it. Isn't it awesome? Absolutely. I'd express more joy if it wasn't so if it wasn't so worried for you. Eh, I'll be fine in an hour or two. I hold him for a little while longer, sharing body heat and supporting his barely standing body. We're gonna get him back. I told you, I can't move. And I won't be able to until I get some magic back. We don't have to do it right now. We'll go tomorrow, early in the morning. You think he'll be alright by tomorrow? Whoever took him didn't seem to want to kill him, or us otherwise. Or us otherwise, who have done so already? But he's a wyvern. I already told you, I always knew. You still consider him your friend, don't you? Yeah, but... No buts. I'm your friend as well. There's no question about it. And I never want you to doubt it. As your friend, I'm not letting anything happen to your other friends. His eyes light up with hope, and the smile comes back, even if it's smaller than usual. What about the battles tomorrow? Battles? Pair battles, yes. Everyone pairs up and we do... Pairs up and we do a two against two battle. Oh, I forgot those were a thing. Why are you so concerned about that? Isn't this way more important? We can't miss them. And the headmaster will be watching this year, the same as today. To assess the students or something. I don't want to, I don't want to miss it, and more importantly, I don't want you to miss it. You just can't not take care Kate Nick blah, you just can't not take care of your friends, can you? But as selfish as it let out to be. Alright. As you wish. We'll demolish any first years that are unfortunate enough to be paired against us. <laughs> Love the spirit. I pity there's people already. I'm gonna have to unleash my pent up rage on them. I said before that I hate sad people, so let's cheer up. Although it's hard to be happy when you can't move. I get upset just by thinking at how pathetic I must have looked until now with a frown on. Which is a bit ironic. Want me to carry you back? You and what muscle? I'll make you eat those words up, little, up, little jester. I get up, place a strength enchantment on myself, and pick up the unexpected cat, placing him on my shoulder like a log. Oh my. Alright, I don't mind this. Don't judge a book by its cover. Shall we? Lead the way. I turn around before starting the trip, with his butt facing the same way as me, and I take out my phone to sneak a picture of his sand drawing. A drawing of me, him, and the little wyvern, all happy together. Keepsake. Hey, not to ruin your, protagon your protagonistic hero moment, but your shoulder is a bit too narrow. It kind of hurts my stomach. Oh, sorry. I turn him around, picking, up his, picking him up bridal style instead. Is this better? The cat looks, the cat looks into the strong, manly leopard's eyes. Lewd thoughts going on through his head as he's being manhandled effortlessly. <sighs> I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> we begin our journey back to the academy. The trip is quiet, save for the occasional wild animal noises making my fur bristle, a fact that makes time. I mean, my good friend in my arms chuckle. You realize I can easily drop you whatever, right? Then who would protect you against squirrels? 
Scaredy cat. This could also have a high chance of carrying rabies or other diseases. Don't ruin nature for me, please. You asked for it. Let's pass the time with something that doesn't include being a nerd. What do you propose? Do you know how to play Never Have I Ever? I believe so. Any extra rules beside the regular ones? Instead of putting a finger down, you have to kiss the closest person to you. You're the closest person to me. <gasps> no way! I guess that's true. Yeah, we're not doing punishments. Coward. I'll start. Shoot. Never have I ever... Huh. Uh... Okay, so I've I've done I've actually done these two. I've never shoplifted before. Now let's do that. Nope, never, never. Why so surprised? I have no reason to. I'm not an asshole by choice, and I don't know if I mentioned it, but my parents bought me almost everything I wanted, except that I hate relying on them for things. So I made so I made my own money by hunting Nightfallen. It'd be pretty stupid to put all that effort into getting money just to start shoplifting. Plus, it's a pretty small town. Everybody knows everybody. My reputation would be destroyed. Your saint reputation of local troublemaker. Exactly! My turn! <laughs> Let's do... Actually, I'm curious. Fancy a friend's parent. You kidding me? Have you seen Aiden's dad? Awooga! To bet he's an absolute bitch. Otherwise, he'd be, he would have absolutely been the one I lost my virginity to. He's not even that old, either. Wow. He must be really handsome, then. Wish I could meet him. Ha! <laughs> Good one. Wasn't a joke, but all right. <laughs> oh yeah, does he not know? Yeah, I guess so. My turn. Let's see. Let's do. <clears throat> Go thinking. I feel like that's targeted at me specifically. No, why would? Oh, oops. Honestly, I forgot that's literally how we met. Heh, <laughs> Maybe you did like the name Tartarus and lied about it all along. Absolutely not. One second. Eh, fair enough. My turn. Never have I ever had a threesome in a public place with two complete strangers. That is very specific. No, no I have not. Why would you think that anyway? I don't know, you look like the type that can pull it off. Didn't we already establish that we're both virgins? Oh, right, I forgot. Hey, here's an idea. Since we're virgin best friends, do you want to do it together? The thoughts in my mind look like a keyboard smash right now. What the hell is that question? So sudden, so bold. I kind of like it. Well, what do you mean? Well, if you ever find a boyfriend, I'll find a partner as well. Then we can do that, that thing they do in movies where bottoms fist bump while laying next to each other in bed, getting railed at the same time. Ah, that's what it is. The thought is still lewd as hell, but in a different way. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I mean, if you want to. Great. It's a promise then. At first, I thought his question was just a joke, a real-life shitpost, but his content, his content expression and soft smile says otherwise. What? What if it's a woman? Then I hope you don't mind if I plant my tongue in your girl's mouth while you're going to town on her. Your gay ass could never. You're right, but I'd try for you. <laughs> I'd have a guy behind me to take my attention off of it, obviously. I'm slowly getting used to the cat's casual, dirty words, paired with Scribble's usual nonsense. Conversations like these do not embarrass me as much as, as much anymore. Still, I can't help but blush a little in the end. We continue walking and playing. We both realize we told each other so many details about our personal lives, yet we're both dumbasses that can't retain any information. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout-out to our lovely bronze tier patrons. Thank you all for all you do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our silver tier patron, Cade Silverman. Thank you for going a bit above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you to our gold tier patron, Amr. You're awesome. We love you. Thank you for subbing to Ultimate Tier. Anyway, if you all want to get your names and credits, get access to not safe for more contents as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye!